As Jesus came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Then he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there, and he said, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. I looked at Jesus at the end of another tumultuous day. After yesterday, when everyone was talking about him fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah, of a king riding into Jerusalem, Pontius Pilate, the governor, had increased security. There were soldiers everywhere looking for signs of trouble. Jesus was not content with putting the civil authority on alert. He had to tweak the tale of the religious establishment as well. The temple priests were seething when they saw what he did. It's hard to know where the line is between sorrow and anger for Jesus. When he looked across the city of Jerusalem, as he approached it over the Mount of Olives on his way from Bethany, he could not hold back the tears. Jesus knew how God loves the whole world, but he has a special place in his heart for Jerusalem. When Jesus stood on the hillside, he could see in his mind's eye the city besieged and under attack. He could tell that even though God had sent him to his own, his own people would not see him for who he was. He went to the temple more in sorrow than in anger. He had another prophecy in his thoughts, this time from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Sorrow turned to anger when he saw the exorbitant prices that were being charged for lambs and doves being sold. The priests determined what animals they judged to be good enough for offerings as a sacrifice, and they made sure that the only ones that they would accept were those that were sold by the dealers who held a license to operate in the temple precincts. Some were the priests' relatives, Others had paid substantial sums to secure a pitch. They expected a good return on their investment. It was a lucrative arrangement for those involved. The ones who suffered were the devout worshippers who wanted to honour God, who were forced to pay extortionate prices for their offerings. It made Jesus anger, and a fire burned inside him. This evening, back in Bethany, he was no longer angry, he was sad. He saw that the destruction of the temple and the city was inevitable. Even more present to his mind was his own destruction. A different sort of Messiah might have issued a call to arms. 
There were plenty of precedents for the children of Israel winning battles against the odds because God had stretched out his mighty arm for them. But Jesus knew that was not his calling. People needed to be saved from themselves as much as from their enemies. He saw destruction. But after destruction, renewal, he uttered his own prophecy. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. It was just like Jesus to say something that would bear more than one interpretation. <laughs>